Hello, dear friends. My name is Brother Sean, and I am proud to be a member of the Teo community of St. Francis, a community of like-minded souls who've surrendered their heart to embrace a simpler life, a life rooted in the simplicity of the therapeutic scenes of Mount Sinai, embracing the tree of life, which St. Francis of Assisi revealed to us in his beautiful teachings, especially the Canticle of the Creatures. As an online community, we come together for agape. And in saying all of that, we also embrace a loving Father, Mother, God Supreme through the natural world, the Cathedral of God. But the short title of this video is about Is God Found in Pomp and Splendor? First, I would like to read a reflection that I came across many, many years ago and it is a quote from G.K. Chesterton, Chesterton. Amidst this pomp and splendor, where do I find the barefoot Galilean? Chesterton was referring to Rome, the Vatican, whilst he respected it as a holy place. He found the wealths troubling his soul because he realized that whilst the chosen few lived in such splendor, the hierarchy, in the seat of Christendom, he was troubled in his heart, knowing that many others, also children of God, were living in abject poverty. And in prayer he asked God, where is your son, the barefoot Galilean? And I would like to just share with you that there is nothing wrong with beauty, with splendor and with pomp. In fact, it can be a good thing. But the problem with it is, is that man, because of his human nature and the demands that we make of ourselves and of others, we sometimes lose the plot. And because we all have an addictive personality, well, I know I have, that we can sometimes cling to pomp and ceremony that can stifle simplicity. And what G.K. Chesterton said about the pomp and splendor in Rome, his focus was more on where is the simple Jesus, the barefoot Galilean? Where is he in this mindset of pomp and glory and splendor? And he sensed too that many were so caught up in that mindset that they were alienated in their heart from God's family. And many have difficulty connecting with the poor who come knocking on their door for help. I've witnessed that. They become an inconvenience. I remember as a young monk in training, when we were on the rota for the kitchen duties helping dear brother Alphonsus, Lord rest his soul, we were regularly inundated with travellers. Those who slept rough, and Alphonsus had a very kind spirit. He always ensured that in the pantry 
there was sufficient to feed a football team. But we had a superior, a lovely man, very polite, but he had breeding, and he was more turned on by the upper classes. Unlike another superior, Brother Ambrose, who was so down to us that you wouldn't know he was a superior with such powerful responsibilities. But this other brother in charge, he would regularly leave the monastery to go and attend various private functions, dinner parties. And I know he spoke rather eloquently and he always smelt divine from his aftershaves, gifts from his friends, nothing wrong with that. But I remember one day as I was cleaning the large Aga ovens where he was telling Brother Alphonsus off for wasting the monastery food. And Brother Alphonsus was very upset. In fact, I could hear him crying in his room because the occasion was quite hurtful and harmful. And I tried to get him to confide with me, but he wouldn't because I was a novice and there were clear boundaries. But what it showed me was that even in the Church of God, there is a division with the haves and the have-nots. And though the Church was founded on the Beatitudes of Jesus, I guess somewhere along the way, down through the centuries, we've lost sight of the simplicity of our servanthood. And I guess that's one of the reasons why many of the great masters came into being, like Francis of Assisi. He was a threat to the church because he didn't live in an ivory castle. He didn't have a myriad of servants. He slept in a cave. And in that cave he found his God. Is that where you are today? Are you more turned on by wealth and affluence? Do you feel you need them in your life? There's nothing wrong with materialism. But there is something wrong when you make it a focus and it preoccupies your sacred space because it clouds your judgment and it does affect your relationship with the Father, Mother, God of abundance. And in the church today, we have many good people who live that simple life where they are detached from materialism. Materialism doesn't own them. They don't wave it in your face. And coming back to the story of the superior who criticised my dear friend, the cook in our monastery, he felt obliged to say nothing to Alphonsus in his defence, but he carried on giving food to the poor because he felt that that's what Jesus would do. Now I know he incurred the wrath of the superior. Today we need to wake up. Where do I find the barefoot Galilean in the opulence, in the materialistic world that we're living in? We are living in a society that we have created the haves and the have-nots. And as a Franciscan who embraces all faiths, we have our travelers who come to the house here. In fact, we have one of our favourites, Hamish, and it's an honour to welcome him. It's an honour because we try to see the face of Christ in him. Because we don't know, do we, that sometimes in entertaining a tramp, a traveller, or someone who's lost everything, we actually might be entertaining an angel. But that's not for us to work out. Our duty of care is to try and see the divine, the supreme, 
in all God's children, rich and poor. But coming back to the question, where amidst this pomp and splendor of Rome do I find the Barefoot Galilean? I guess that's the reason why I've never gone to Rome, because I would be militant, I would be angry, and I would be deeply upset to see such wealth when there is so much poverty in our world. Forgive me if I have offended you, but I have to speak my truth in love. Thank you. <laughs>